during uh, day one, we had the announcement from uh, Axiata Group in open sourcing uh, their mobile internet fulfillment exchange. So uh, that, I think, uh, is going to be very interesting to see the repercussions of that through the uh, next few months. We had uh, dialogue showing some amazing curves. I mean, it was vertical, the uh, line around uh, API growth. And it's important to understand that that vertical line in terms of API uh, growth directly translates into revenue. So uh, the results uh, that they were showing, the case studies and all the services that uh, Dialogue have uh, been creating over the last uh, one to two years, I think is an impressive case study for uh, the industry. We also, of course, uh, had uh, late in the uh, day the uh, Telestax Dialogic announcement with NTT, so congratulations to uh, those guys. I hope you agree that through the day, we were having many, many case studies for our showing real services with real revenue. And uh, I think uh, Appy Days uh, with Lewis wrapped up the day very well in showing a very simple case study in the use of uh, telecom capabilities and, of course, importantly, WebRTC. <coughs> What we're going to cover today is uh, nearly as intense. So we're going to kick off with uh, a demonstration, one of your Danish, famous dangerous demonstrations. So fingers crossed everything works. But this is very important for our industry. And we're going to be promoting this, uh, I think, all the way through to Mobile World Congress next year, because this is going to be very impressive. So we're going to go through some very interesting presentations this morning. Uh, again. You're going to see a lot of operator, technology vendor presentations, because we're keeping it as real as possible. Then we'll break for coffee. We've, we're not going to run the last uh, speed networking event. I think everybody has met everybody else by now. And uh, we'll then break into the uh, work streams. Then uh, we'll uh, come back to uh, after lunch for work stream review. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed yesterday's work streams. I think one of the comments made was it was quite a nice group therapy session. So we have another group therapy session, and then we'll wrap up with a uh, panel discussion looking at the future of telecom application development. I'm very excited by uh, some of the questions that we're going to be tackling here. So as you can see, we have a uh, group of the usual suspects. And uh, I'll just hand over to James to basically uh, take over proceedings. So over to you, James. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is going to be a bit of a sprint. Uh, when we practice this, we've discovered that we could go on for about an hour and a half. We've got 30 minutes, and we're already four minutes over. Thank you, Alan. So we're going to sprint through. So I'm, I'm James Bodie. I'm Head of Research and Development at Truephone. I have a life history of abusing communication systems, as you can see. I spent 20, 22 years in the British Army, uh, then retired. I'm on my second career now, having a huge amount of fun at Truephone. I, I think I possibly have the best job in the entire company because I do research and development, which means I do new stuff. I get to play with all the... the the good stuff, and when it gets boring, I hand it off to somebody, and uh, there's Vladimir in the back smiling because he's one of the people that he gets uh, handed to. So, a whole load of stuff about Truephone. James Tag talked about it yesterday. We started off in a farm. There were five of us. There are now over a thousand of us. We do high-end stuff, so we sell to international banks, Formula One, uh, Russian oligarchs, uh, pop stars, uh, football players, that, that kind of thing. Anybody with a really complicated international lifestyle is what we do. I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, why are applications really important to Truefone? Well, it's one of the things that really sets us apart from every, everybody else, and we can make money from it. Um, I'm not even going to talk about that because that's complicated. Um, service differentiation. Um, one of the reasons why we're... we're making a lot of money at the moment is um, we have a number of applications, one of which is something called Truefone Mobile Recording. It's an application that allows uh, compliant recording to be um, achieved. So if you're an international banker uh, and you're using your cell phone to make trades, 
uh, you have to, in many countries now, you have to record the voice and SMS. And if you're using uh, data to, to do the trade, then you have to record that as well. And the big problem for the international banks is how do you do that globally? Because how many global mobile network operators do you think there are in the world? Well, actually, there's only one, and we're it. And so overnight, we became the default setting for uh, uh, international um, um, uh, mobile recording, which has been great for us. We make quite a lot of money out of that. Um, and as time goes by, I think we're probably going to end up where we will be giving away the airtime for free to anybody who signs up for the apps. So, live demo. Why are we doing a live demo? Well, um, this is Tad Summit. It's not the Lego movie. Um, there are lots of people who put up lots and lots of slides with slideware and, and how, how many times have I seen Lego building blocks? It's, it's very boring. And in fact, what we ought to do, Alan, if anybody puts up a Lego uh, building block thing, they have to sing, everything is awesome. <laughs> or something like that. So we don't believe in that. We believe in live demos. Only the big boys can do live demos to show real capabilities. Anybody can show a PowerPoint slide, but to show a real mobile network working, and we're going to do that, aren't we? No pressure. No pressure. Ooh. Um, so we're going to do a dangerous demo for you. So what have we done? Um, we put together a team of the, well, the usual suspects. Truephone, providing mobile numbers, core uh, SS7 bits and pieces, and uh, lookups and SMS via API. So the mobile bits at the front end. Uh, Canonical, uh, represented by Arthur here, uh, doing the cloud OS with orchestration and a live dashboard. Well, hopefully it's a live dashboard. It wasn't a number of minutes ago. Uh, Metaswitch with, with Paul there doing the providing a cloud-based IMS system uh, in the form of Project Clearwater. And then good old Jean and the boys from Telestax uh, whacking an application server with a development interface on the, uh, on the back end of it uh, to entertain you. And we're going to use that. Well, yeah, and th these are the team. Uh, myself, Arta, Paul, and Jean, with a supporting cast of thousands in the front row who will be prodding things when they fall over and don't work properly. So I will hand over very quickly to Arta, who's probably he's got about two minutes to go through about 30 slides. Okay. So what is our timer, by the way? Because I, I don't see. Okay, guys. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Arthur Tillich, and I'm from Canonical. Uh, so Canonical is basically company behind Ubuntu. Um, I just realized that not everybody knows what is Ubuntu, even less people knows what is what is Canonical. But believe me, developers knows what is uh, Ubuntu because uh, apart from Ubuntu operating system and Ubuntu OpenStack, uh, and some tools for the orchestration. Uh, uh, we are preferred choice for uh, developers, and um, like 70% of the workload on the public clouds, Amazon Azure, Google is, is, is using Ubuntu. And uh, the same huge number is also true for open OpenStack. And innovators are using Ubuntu, so we are happy to work with uh, telco, ISVs, operators. Okay, Juju. Juju is a, is, is a backbone of the demo. It's an is a, is a, is a infrastructure uh, utilized by uh, all those uh, telco services and let us to orchestrate and deploy them in a very quickly manner on, the, on, on various environments. Uh, in this demo, we will utilize Amazon. So we'll have two environments very quickly. I'll show you how you can deploy, but we have also another setup uh, which is already pre-configured because deployment, even is, if even is extremely fast with Juju, still takes some minutes. And we don't have too many minutes left, so. And you will see more with Daryl, and there's an orange box, guys, so you can see uh, this bare metal deployments and other options you, you could have with, the, with a Juju. All right, uh, our environment, some architecture, details, many virtual machines uh, we spin off to, uh, to provide a service. And I already mentioned uh, uh, building blocks from uh, Clearwater, I'm sorry, from, uh, from MetaSwitch and from the uh, Telestacks. 
and monitoring and some uh, additional services so you can have the, the whole environment uh, ready to, uh, to, 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 uh, to deploy and to provide the service. And again, it takes uh, much less time than typical telco service deployment. All right, uh, now let's switch to the... Yeah, you have to switch. Yeah, I have to switch. I have to switch. So that's the... That's our production, and there is some. Uh, that's uh, Amazon based environment. So you can very quickly, if you would like to deploy a new service, like the bundle we have for, uh, uh, for the. Just let me. Where is mouse? Okay. So like a telco bundle, you, you can you have the pre-configured bundle we, you can uh, create before that and then deploy to multiple environments. So in this case, I just drag and drop the uh, the service which consists of the Clearwater IMS and RESTCOM and some other services and they will be deployed on this environment. This will take some time and eventually at the, uh, at the end of the demo you will see this environment up and running. Then we have another account when the, the configuration is already set up. So you have all those building blocks, but now I can maybe pass the microphone to Jean, and so you can, or Paul, so they can share a few words about the building blocks and the services they, they are providing. Thank you very much, Arthur. Hi, everybody. To the demo. No, no, go to the presentation. All right. Okay, um, I'm Paul Drew from MetaSwitch, um, and as um, James said, we're providing project clear water analysis. So just very quickly, MetaSwitch, uh, we've been around for 30 years as a software telco vendor, um, company about 650 employees, about 1,000 global service providers around the globe, um, selling a combination of soft switches, next generation, um, media gateways, session border controllers, IMS core, um, telephone application servers, wide variety of different products. Um, what we have got here, and we're going to talk about in more detail, is Project Clearwater. Project Clearwater is our kind of VoIP in the cloud. It's a massively scalable, very low cost IMS um, core solution. We put this together from scratch, took the view that um, telecoms needs to go towards cloud technology and lead to learn from what the likes of WhatsApp and Google and people have done. So we built this as an IMS core from the ground up based around um, services like Memcached and um, Cassandra's open source databases and used open standard APIs. And this is an open source um, IMS core. We're providing support service for it for service providers. So it's a completely alternate way of building an IMS core for putting telephony applications together in the network. Um, we've used this here, um, and I'll show you quickly the, the application. Um, there's a mobile, we all can get, uh, James is going to do the demo in the moment, you can show you can call the mobiles, it's going to go through the true phone network. We've got Project Clearwater as the IMS core, so this is um, determining where to route the calls. It's using the IMS interfaces, the ISC interface to go into Telestacks, RESCOM, it's going to route it as a terminating call, terminating application server, and then the RESCOM has got the application on top of it, which we're going to demo in just a minute. So that's where Project Clearwater fits into it, and we've used it as an open source. It was extremely easy to get up and running as part of this demo. Um, kind of took about a day or, or less. Okay. So I think with that, I will hand over to Jean, and Jean can talk about um, Telestax. Thank you, Paul. Um, I didn't put any slides. Uh, just uh, wanted to go directly through the what we've done in this terms. One, yeah, this one. Or maybe the Juju admin. Yeah. yeah. The other one. So basically, this is the deployment we have on the Amazon cloud. We have the Clearwater environment here. Uh, I think the, the, the Wi-Fi is a bit shaky because it, it misses a couple of icons, but basically we have um, the Clearwater environment calling out to um, a load balancer here um, that is fronting basically whoops, three RISCOM units. So you can see the number of units here. So we have a cluster of three RISCOM nodes that's fronted by a load balancer. So any incoming call that we'll make uh, in the demo will actually be load balanced between uh, three RISCOM nodes. 
Um, so I'll show you how the demo was, uh, was actually put together. Um, if I go to the load balancer and, oh, can you guys hold this? <laughs> Yeah, it's worth emphasizing that this is uh, a fully scalable, low-balanced, um, real-world, big-boy uh, network we've got here. Uh, and uh, we were actually going to, as a second phase of this, um, show you live load testing and throw of the order of 100,000 concurrent calls at it to see how it scales up. And then uh, when we turn the traffic off, it scales back down again. But are yeah, we good to go? That would be the next step for type hack. Yeah, we just months. don't have, we could go on for about an hour and a half with this, but we don't have time. So yesterday I was presenting my slides that we were going up from the API developments to what a tool that we have called the Rescom Visual Designer, uh, which allows you without any doing any coding to actually create voice um, USSD and SMS applications so that uh, you don't have to be a developer. So we put together a TADS um, uh, demo application. All the UI is uh, shaky on this one. Um, so you can basically drop all those um, all those verbs um, on the on the user interface to actually put together the demo. So when we make an incoming call, we'll hear "Welcome to the tele Telecom Application Developer Summit 2014." Uh, you'll be prompted to uh, to answer a question on what is your favorite drink. Uh, we'll collect the DTMF, your response, and go to a different um, menu that will basically check uh, your soft drink. Um, then we will call out to an external service that will uh, call to the Trufon HLR API so that we can get more information on where is the call coming from, which network you're roaming on, et cetera, and feed that back so to, the, to the application. So basically we have a number of variables you can use, or you can reuse from the external service you called uh, to make routing decisions. So we'll decide if the number has been ported or not. Uh, call a different module, um, which is here, and basically say um, another text on uh, um, basically the age. If you're not um, uh, old enough to order a beer or wine, you'll get a message saying that you're too young and uh, we swift, switch you to the soft drink. And then basically say all, uh, all the information that's been feeding back by the external service. I think it's demo time. I think it probably is. Um, Arthur, do you want to sw switch the thing back again? Because you're the, the demo god of switching. Oh, I get That's it all horribly so wrong. The, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention, the external service was actu will also actually um, update a live, uh, dashing, the, uh, a live dashboard uh, that will show real time uh, all the people calling and, uh, and making, uh, choosing their drinks. OK. Now it's time for everybody to interact with the live demo. Get your phones out. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to buy you a drink. But in order to earn your drink, you've got to interact with our demo. So if you get out your, your, your phones, and uh, the, uh, what you have to do is to dial this number, but with the last two digits being the year of your birth. And to demonstrate it, here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, we'll just step through it on my phone. We were going to use Jean's phone, but he's got a, a really funny French phone which uh, doesn't want to interface into the, uh, into the audio system. So we're going to use mine, and it'll tell, tell, tell us all kinds of... Welcome to Telecom Application Developer Summit 2014. What is your favorite drink? Oh, what, what shall I have Press to drink? Press one for beer. Shall I have beer? Press two for wine. Or wine. Press three for soft drink. I think I'll go for a wine. And, oh, look. Please wait while we all is your answer. Oh, somebody you are too young to legally drink wine, so you will be given a soft drink. But because I... Your favorite drink is I'm soft drink. Too, too old, you call too young. from United Kingdom and you are born in year 1999. You are calling from a Vodafone Libertel NV service, yeah, don't, don't, which is roaming on the Vodafone it tells Libertel lines, NV lines. network in the Turkey. HLR lookup gets, gets very Your mobile confused. number is ported from the Trucky Software Cellular Network Limited that's network. Us. Thank you for having taken this yeah, poll. It was all very Beer is winning. <laughs> it would have been much better if we did it on uh, Jean's because he's got a, uh, a proper French phone, which has got a ported number and everything. But I can put it on. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Do you want? To, yeah. So, uh, if you'd like to have a go now, so who's here from the United States that was born in 1967? Ah, there we are. So the number is uh, uh, is plus four four seven four one seven eight. Can we go back to it for a second? Yeah. Uh, you are too no, young to no. legally drink soft drink, so you will go. be given a soft drink. Your favorite drink is soft drink. You called from France and you are born in year 1999. You are calling from a free mobile service which is roaming on the Turkcell network in Turkey. Your mobile number is ported from the Orange network. Thank you for having taken this poll. Yeah, um, w uh, if we wanted, we'd go a little bit further and say, and you're using uh, an iPhone 6 if he was, and your firmware's out of date. So, uh, amazing how much information we can gather about people. So, how we're we doing on that? And you all got an SMS after taking the poll with a voucher that uh, you can use tonight at the club with us. Yeah, so the score with the drinks is, uh, if you've got your voucher, meet us in the bar between 6 and 7 tonight, and uh, Andy's buying. <laughs> no, it's great, because uh, uh, he buys, and then I sign off his, his expense check. So it's looking reasonably expensive, Andy. We've got about 36 <laughs> drinks so far. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that running in the background. Uh, how are we doing for time? We're, we're good, are we? Oh, we are. We've done well. Sorry, I, I, ha I hassled everybody to go faster. So can we go back to the slides? Because uh, we've got a, a few more slides yeah. to, uh, to run through yet. Brilliant. So this is what's, uh, what happens. Uh, it's a welcome, favorite drink, check for underage drinkers, select preferred drink. It, we then do our, an HLR lookup to find out a whole load of useful, interesting stuff. Um, uh, and then uh, we send an SMS token back for the drink and display the answer in the dashboard screen. Um, now, the second phase that we were going to do, but we... Go the we want to go... How do you switch to the dashboard? Sorry, I've, I've broken it again. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, so who's from Luxembourg? <laughs> yeah, Joachim, but you're not really from Luxembourg, are you? <laughs> With your Belgian, Luxembourg, Bulgarian phone. Uh, it's great to have somebody in the audience who's even more complicated than I am. That's really good. Um, and, and you probably see we're also picking up um, uh, Twitter. So let's, how do, how do I switch back again? Oh, it's only on the, on the tab? Yeah. Okay. Right, so the bit that we were going to do is, is this, phase two, but there just wasn't enough time. So we're going to um, set up a, a traffic generator to uh, set up calls with media, because only big boys do signaling and media, uh, and then throw very large amounts of traffic at, at the system so that we can actually watch it um, scaling up. Now, if you want to see this, you can. Uh, Daryl is here in the front row, and he'll be delighted to show you all this sort of stuff uh, working on his orange box in the corner. Uh, and uh, Paul will be lurking around to explain more about uh, Project Clearwater as well. Uh, very quickly, and we've almost finished. The future, where are we going to go next with this? Well, I think we're probably going to uh, do a next phase of this at Mobile World Congress. So if any of you guys want to play with this, I know H. Senid uh, want to, uh, to play with this, we'll, we'll configure it and we'll run it as a distributed demo at Mobile World Congress, uh, which could be quite interesting. We'll see how that goes. That should stir a few people up. And then hopefully for um, TAD Hack next year, um, we, uh, we're, we should be, we're aiming to distribute SIM cards and API to uh, developers so that they can actually play with real live services which will 
interact with the, with the, the cloud-based backend. So that's about it from me. Um, have we got a, a minute or two for questions? Yeah, who? Uh, so I get to run around with a microphone as well. This is exciting. So are you using this in the backend for Truefone currently in prod? Said the man from Liban. Do you think I'm going to tell you the answer to that? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> we have, yeah, we, we, we have some systems working in the background. We don't have a clear water working at the moment. Any more questions? Is that? Why? Why? Because, I mean, it's new. I mean, we only knocked this up sort of like two days before the, uh, the, the thing. And it's a, it's a proof of concept. So that's why. It will come. So any more questions? Nobody wants to ask any questions. Oh, there's one. Why didn't it work on that particular carrier? Um, it's because... Um, I've got a block of 100,000 UK mobile numbers. It's a new block. And when you um, live it up, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for every single carrier to do the data fill. Um, and normally the international ones, because they tend to work back through an international routing, are much better and quicker. But Avia clearly uh, are probably tied to somebody who hasn't done a data, data fill somewhere, and that's why it's not working. So, any more questions? No, I think we get off. Well, then a round of applause for an excellent